Yeah, it was fun. Alright guys, so this is a 45-man sit-and-go review from WTF Madness. So I'm going to do this one for him quickly and then uh, load up another 180 to finish off. So I always put my reviews on YouTube if you guys can't stick around so you can see it um, at your leisure. Got a limp more? Uh, yeah, I limped the small blind heads up at least five times, DJ. I was mixing it up. I don't claim to be the best heads up player, guys, so I'm sure I made, you know, some mistakes. But I think given the situation and the, how well he was adjusting, uh, I think I played it as best as I could. Obviously, for each for each hand, there are multiple ways to play, you know? Like, when you have King Jack with 10 big blinds, or 11 big blinds, yeah, you can limp, you can min-raise, you can shove. They're all profitable. You just, you know, you have to pick one which you think will get the most value depending on the current dynamic of the game. And for me, that was... Uh, I chose to limp. Um, Alright, isolating this ace-five suited... Okay, you can do this. If you want to isolate, let's make it a bit bigger. Let's start with three times the big blind, and then you add one big blind for every limper. So you should raise here to 150. The other option is just to over limp and play it multi-way with a suited ace. Um, yeah, so I don't mind isolating, but I think you need to raise bigger pre-flop. That's a very bad flop for you, because all the limp core ranges have jack x, queen x, and you only have ace high, no flush or anything, so I just, I wouldn't even bother c-betting into two people, I just give up here. But it worked out. Let's raise the ace-10, that's fine. Okay, so two pairs really strong, we, we're happy going broke here. If he's, you, if he wants to gamble with a king high flush draw, then we're happy to oblige him with two pair. So I'd raise here, make it at least 180. I think that's way too small, because look at the odds that you're giving him. He's getting more than 4 to 1, so he could easily call here with any flush draw and be correct. So you need to raise bigger to really punish uh, the flush draws. Okay. Fold, fold, fold. Let's play this one. Remember guys, this is a 45-man uh, sit-and-go from WTF Madness. I would defend here for an extra 50 chips. You're getting 7 to 1, so even though the hand's not that great, just because of the pot odds, you can call there in the big blind. Alright, well, a pair blind versus blind is very strong. I would probably go for a raise, but the limp is fine. But, you know, if he raises, you have to be willing to limp shove, because you don't want to just limp call here with your small pair, because if you miss your set, you just end up folding to a c-bet, and that's very weak with this strong of a hand, blind versus blind. So this line is okay, but if you take it, I would limp shove preflop if he raises. And if you're not willing to do that, then you should just raise preflop. I mean, even open shoving is fine. It's a little deep, but um, profitable. Okay, good stab on that board. Let's fold, fold. Okay, sevens. Let's see what to do here. Good raise size. Um, Alright, so... You could just... you have showdown value, right, with your mid-pair. So you could check back and try and get to a cheap river, but by doing that, you really open yourself up to being bluffed on the turn. Um, so if the card is anything higher than a 7 and he bets, you're in a tricky spot, because then he can bet turn, bet river as a bluff, and you end up having to call down um, with a weak pair. So for me, I prefer just taking the aggressive approach here and c-betting, and if he decides to check raise, I, I'll just give it up. And then what happens is, if he check calls, well, we can check back on the turn, and then hopefully check back to river. So by c-betting, re we really take control of this pot, and don't allow him to bluff um, too wide. So well done. I agree with that play. Okay. Let's fold that. Fold that, fold, fold, fold. Alright, we'll take the free flop with 4-5. Five. 
Pair is good. Similar situation to the pocket sevens. We have a pair, we could take it to showdown, but by betting here, we really take control of the betting. Uh, we can choose our own bet size, and if he does check call with a bluff, he's usually, uh, with a draw, he's just going to check on the turn, and then we get to see a free river. So I'd prefer just to bet here with my weak pair. Well done. There are multiple ways to play that kind of hand. Okay, we're happy going all in pre-flop with Ace King. Well done. Okay, Ace King. Great raise. Good. Okay, looks like we have a bit of a dry spell. I'll walk. That's good. Okay, we'll fold the suited nine eight against the Razor. Good fold. I would have liked to shove that on the button, but against the limper with the short stack, no, it's just not strong enough anymore. Fold that, fold that, fold that, fold that. Damn. I would have re-pushed against this button steal with a pair, but this guy's Geshan is already pushed, so he, he has to have a decent hand here, um, and you don't want to get involved with a small pair against his range. What did he have? I think that got shown down. Ace Queen, yep. Okay. Well, we dodged a bullet because the button had eights. But you can't play poker like that. That's just bad luck if that does happen. Good steal. Okay, fold, fold. Good raise. Fold. So there are a few ways we can play this ace jack. We can raise, but it does get a little weird if one of these big stacks shoves preflop. Um, like if you raise, is this Simeus going to push all in with ace 9 or ace 8? Probably not, but he might push with ace 10. Um, same thing with this guy and the big blind. Like ace jack to raise call here is very marginal. I think it's better just to push all in, so that you don't get flat called and have to play flops. Um, and you might, you know, you might have to play out of position against this Simeus, which wouldn't be very good. And yeah, I just don't think it's strong enough to induce from this position. And I don't want to raise fold when it's a low stakes game. These guys could be uh, re-pushing with a lot of weird hands, but you just don't know. Okay, that's fine. Queens obviously is much stronger than Ace Jack, so we can induce with that hand. Hmm, we're getting three to one. So yeah, you could defend here. It's 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 going to cost you a lot of your stack, something like eight percent of your stack. If you think this guy's a really weak player post flop, then I don't mind defending for this small size, but. If you're not that confident against him, maybe he's a strong reg, then yeah, folding is just fine. Hmm. This guy's pushing four big blinds. I think this is actually really close. Hmm. I think it was suited ace two. Oh, this is a hand I might be more likely to look up in uh, an ICM calculation. But feels like a very close spot to repush with an ace there when he's only pushing four big blinds. You have to think he's pushing four big blinds with at least fifty percent of hands. Okay, fold, 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 fold. Yep. Okay, fold that one. Hmm. I really think this one's a, a push. King Jack off plays so much better than Ace 2 off. And similar situation, he's got five big blinds, so it's a slightly bigger stack, but he's really desperate. Now we're far away from the money, it's a multi table tournament, I think, and we're in late position. Kind of think that one is a push, in my opinion. Okay. We'll fold that. This is a spot for, like,. In the offsuit kings, definitely king eight off. King six off would be the the close one here. 
any suited king is a push here, but not king two off off suited. Okay, we'll push the suited ace. That's good. Fold, fold, fold. What happens here? Oh wow, tough spot. Hmm. Yep, I think the fold here is okay. He's pushing his big stack, and there are two guys that really hurt him if he gets called. So, I think it's unlikely he's doing this with like ace five offsuit. I think the worst hand, obviously, he can't really have aces here because if he had aces, he would just induce by min raising. So I think his range is something like maybe ace eight to ace queen, ace maybe even ace king, and then the pairs like pocket fives to pocket tens, then maybe he does this with king-queen, uh, maybe king-jack suited, something like that. And I think against that range, the ace-knight offsuit's a little too weak, even though we're short. It's a tough spot, though. Hmm. Now we're pretty desperate, but that's not a call. Okay, yep, well done. Ace-ten's good enough. Okay, all in. Well done. Ooh, what? Um, I mean, is this the final table? I don't think so. Nope. We're not even on the final table yet, and you're folding pairs in the cutoff? Nah. You just, you can't really make these hero folds until you, um, until you get closer to the money, closer to the ICM. I think this is a spot just to take a chip EV shove and push all in. I mean, it's a little bit big, but this guy's not going to want to call his whole stack too wide. So he he has a very tight range. Same thing with this guy. They all have tight ranges, and you have a pair in the cutoff. So even, even if you get called by ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, okay, you flip. Um, it's not the end of the world. Of course, sometimes you get called and you're dominated, but I think most of the time when you push there, you're just getting three folds, and you win this pot of uh, more than 10% of your chips by pushing. So that, that fold there is a little too weak for me. Wow. This one is also pretty close. I think King 10 off is a is a call. Hmm. We're not getting 2 to 1. So I'm fine with folding this King 9 off, but I would really call King 10 off. Close spot there again. Hmm. Okay. I, I'll allow folding one small blind when we have do three offsuit. You want to be very aggressive in the small blind. Okay, ace nine is easy. This one is fine to fold. And you raise it. Hmm. See, this is a little bit disjointed to me. The weak offsuit ace from early position, this would not be a push. Um, yeah, because the hand's just not as good as pocket threes. Um... I mean, I see what your plan is. I guess you're raised folding against the two big stacks, and you're committed against these guys. So, I don't know. This this feels a bit tricky to me. I think it's okay. I think the raise is alright. Because you don't mind getting it all in with the guy that has two big blinds behind, because you do well against his range. It really sucks if you get repushed by one of these big stacks. But they're not going to repush you loose. So I think this is alright. This is okay. Oh, that's a tough situation there. Alright, so this... Just checking to see if this is the final table or not. Okay, yeah, this is the final table. So... In the 45 man's... How many pay? 7 pay, I think? Uh, yeah. So we're already in the money. What happened there? Or maybe we just changed tables. I don't know, we'll find out soon. Good steal, the King Jack. Good enough steal. Definitely committed against the reshove, well done. Okay, we'll fold the 3-8, that's fine. Eh, I would go all in here. Well done, that's good. Any any two cards, now that he's got way less than 10 big blinds, that's great. Great spot to push and try and steal the blinds. Okay, fold that, fold that, we'll fold that. Hmm, that's also a fold. Alright. 
Hmm. It's a bit suspicious. Well, there's two things. I don't really like folding, so I think you have to kind of... Whoa, he's making it 3x, and that's weird. I thought that was just a min raise. If that was a min raise, um, I might flat call, but now that he's making it 3x, I think I have to just decide now, is he trying to steal and I reshove, or is he trapping and I'll just fold? Hmm... Because I really don't like calling 2,000 here, because the flop will be 7,000 chips, and he only has 8,000 left. So his only move is to go all in on the flop. And if you don't flop a king or a queen, I mean, what are you going to do? So I think speculating like this, I don't really like it. I'd just say, if you think he's loose and you think he's just stealing, just push pre-flop and put him to the test like that. There's enough in the in the middle. Yeah, You get into this awkward situation by... By flooding. Alright, all in, yep, well done. GG. Okay. Let's just steal this, that's fine, good. Fold that, fold that. Hmm. Well, we're getting three to. M oh, it's Jacks. I thought it was King Jack. Well, yeah, we just go all in. Hmm. I don't know why you're calling. I don't really like calling. Jacks are quite vulnerable. If the flop is ace king queen, that r the flop does hit his range if if that does happen. Um, so by flatting, you're just hoping that he hits a pair weaker than jacks and decides to stack off. But there aren't too many combinations with uh, without pairs already that are weaker than jacks that he would stack off with. Like what is he raising here? Eight nine suited or ten nine suited? Um, like he's not raising that loose, you'd think. So I just shove preflop. I think um, flatting is just a bit strange for me. Okay, value bet. I don't know. You got to get some value out of this hand. There's a lot of draws out there that he could call you with as well, like um, heart draws. He might have a king queen that he wants to peel. Um, nine ten. He could also be checking back a jack. Um, yeah. I was thinking more about the ICM. Uh, yeah, 45 man ICM. I mean, it. you have to factor it when you're on the exact bubble. But now that you're in the money, just play to get the big payouts. Um, and there are two guys less than 10 big blinds. Yeah, that's true. You you have to think about ICM against the other chip leader. But not with, hand, with, not with pocket jacks. Pocket jacks is just way too strong. You'd think that he's going to... It's a value raise, pre-flop. He's going to call you with 10s and probably 9s, maybe even 8s. He might even call ace-jack. So it's just a value raise, pre-flop, by shoving. Same thing here. I, I'd bet for value. River, bet for value. Yeah. Ace-9. Okay. Well, you could have got more value out of him. If you bet turn and river, he's still calling. His ace. Um, I think this is a shove. This guy's a short stack. He's pushing five big blinds, so his range here has to be super loose. You have a six. It's not like you have ace two offsuit. It's a six. So you beat a lot of his combos. You beat like the six seven suited. You beat all the really weak aces like ace two. Um, he could do this with king six. The you know you, you're at well enough ahead of the five big blind range I think to to reshove and it doesn't really hurt your stack five thousand chips. Hmm. Okay, bit of a strange limp. Well, we could just push all in. If you think this is maybe a trap play, then I don't mind the raise. But then your your plan I guess is to raise fold preflop. This is a bit awkward, it's a bit weird. Um to me when when he people do this, I think he's just trying to knock out the blinds cheaply. So I would just push preflop and put max pressure on him. Cause if he's doing this with maybe even ace jack, he might just fold if you push all in 
and these guys fold, and he has ace jack, he's probably just folding because he doesn't want to risk his whole tournament when there are three guys shorter than him. And that's great for you. If you can get them to fold flips, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay, I guess it's a trap. Do you get odds to draw to your set? That's the only question here. Um, not really, but I guess there's implied as well. We'll try and hit an 8. Bink, there it is. Um, doesn't really matter what you do, you could check. The, the flop is dry enough to so just check. Or you could bet really small. The only thing I don't really like doing is pushing all in. So, yeah, I think you can either bet small, like 2,000, 3,000, or you can check. It's fine. Okay, yep, let's go. Aces, yep. Bad luck. We were correct on the preflop range. I don't know. It's a bit strange. We'll fold the queen 10. Okay, fold that. Fold that. Fold. All in, yep. Fold. Okay, we'll just check. Try and knock this guy out. Eh, fold. Yep, well done. All in, well done. Fold. Fold. All in. Hmm. I would, my, my, yeah, my, you, you guys just, just saw what I did. My initial reaction here is to push all in, because when people limp the small blind, it's very weak. The only concern here is that he's the chip leader, and we are in third position, not not fourth. But we have a big enough stack. I think my decision here really depends on what kind of player he is. If he's a tight-ish passive player, I would just push, because I assume that this is a weak play. But if he's maybe a bit more aggressive, a bit looser, I would just check and see the flop. My initial reaction there is just to shove. Too passive here. 2, 4, 5 really hits your range because you just check the big blind. So you have a lot of these cards in your checking range. And he checked. So he really has nothing here. I think if you bet 1500, you win this so often. Well, now you're screwed. You can't really represent anything because if you had an ace, you would have shoved preflop. So by betting here, you're just saying, I have a 6. And he, is he really going to believe you? I would still try because he checked twice and that's very weak. So I'm glad that you tried, but I, I would have preferred you just to bet the flop. Okay, push all in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Blind versus blind for five big blinds, just push any two cards. Just an ICM mistake there. That one's a good push. Okay, fold. Almost finished, guys. A few more hands to go. That's a fold. Um, I'd probably call for the extra 800, just try and flop something. That's good. Hmm. You could lead this. Because you have a gut shot, two overs. You just have to think about what kind of hands he hot wheels 22 limps with. Because you by leading, you're really just hoping that they fold. But it's a semi-bluff. If you got a, a backup plan, if they do call you, you have some equity. Um, yeah, I'd probably lead. I just think it makes it easier to play. Because then they just fold sometimes, and then if they do call, well, you can just double barrel a lot of turns. If the turn is anything higher than a 9, you just bet. I like your turn bet, though. Okay, all in. Good. Fold that. Okay, 8s. Yep, snap call. Well done. All in. <laughs> uh, Alright. I guess your plan is to fold if he pushes. That's that's okay if he's a very tight player, so maybe you had a good read that he's a tight player. Okay, that fold is fine. Okay, good. All in. Uh, I don't know I don't know why you're doing this. If you're doing this so that you can fold if he pushes, it's a mistake. Because you just want to put maximum pressure on him and not allow him to flat call, pre flop and speculate or re bluff you pre flop. You know, he might look here at a hand like King-10 suited and go, oh, screw it, I'm just going to push. But if you push all in, he might just fold. So I really don't like that min-raise play with less than 10 big blinds. Okay, we'll take the free flop. Pair is great, let's bet. Good, whoa. <laughs> I 
Well, the last time he's did this kind of play, he, it's a monster. He did it with aces. So I'll just give it up. Well done. Shove. Why are we limping? Just push. If he's tight, just push. Just push any two cards and you win pre-flop. You don't need to play this flop. You don't need to give him the chance to hit a pair. Mm. This one's pretty close, I think. We'll just fold. I, I think I would have folded because it's a little too weak. This raise is awkward. If if he pushes all in for an extra 13,000, the pot will be, what's that, 7-3 plus an extra 13. So it will be 20,000. Uh, and you'll have to call... 9. So you're getting 2 to 1 if he repushes all in. So you're kind of committed to call against this guy. This guy, it's a little bit closer, you can probably fold. But you put yourself into an awkward position here by raising. Like if you want to play, just shove. 10 big blinds effective, just shove. Where do I play this? This is poker, Diamond Naga. Uh, PokerStars.com is the the site from this game. So this is a, a replay that I'm doing. I'm doing a hand, hand history review for WTF Madness, one of the viewers. Okay, we'll fold that. Push all in here. Nope. Clear mistake. ICM, just shove any two cards. Okay. Didn't you just raise the... Yeah, I mean, this is the same situation, but you raise that queen five, but you fold this one. I guess this time the big blinds is, is the short stack, so it's a little bit more um, of a clear fold. Hmm. Yeah, a pair's too strong. I would shove here. Bad luck. Okay, fold that. Fold that. All in. Well done. Fold that. Yeah. Okay. All in. Nope. Too weak again. You can't fold your small blind like this, man. Just any two cards, less than 10 big blinds. People are way too tight. I don't know why we're deciding to raise 9 2 offsuit on the button. It's just junk. Just fold it. All in. Well done. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll call to try and knock that guy out. That's fine. Um. Is there a side pot? There is a side pot. So with the side pot, I would just bet, a min bet, to, just to try and win the side pot. Okay, now we just check it down. <laughs> um, yeah, you have to fold, because he has a 7. Alright, heads up time. Let's just push all in against the limp, because limping is weak. So we push all in here. Nope, we check. Okay, check call. He, he just limps, so he doesn't really have an ace. So check call. Check call, nope, and value bet, 5,000, 6 is fine, and he, wow, oh wow, he had it straight, okay, all in, less than 10 big blinds, just push any 2, all in, ace is great, all in, good, call, good, all in, good, alright, WTF Madness, your biggest leak is you are way too tight in the small blind. Um, everything else is pretty good though, so well done.